Thank you for listening to this podcast. Something came from Baltimore. Please subscribe to this podcast on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, and Anchor. It's basically everywhere. Please leave a five-star review so other people can find the show. Write comments about the interviews. We'd love to hear from you. And while this is an independent podcast, I don't have Patreon set up yet. But I do have Venmos and Cash App. And it is awesome if you were able to leave a tip of encouragement to continue. For both Venmos and Cash App, the name is Thomas Gauker. G-O-U-K-E-R. Thomas Gauker. G-O-U-K-E-R, both on Venmos and Cash App. Welcome to another episode of Something Came From Baltimore on the phone tonight. We have Massimo Bocutti. Massimo Bocutti just released his first solo record in 10 years. It's called Encontro. It can be found on the Soundscore label. Massimo is a premier session man. He has played with basically everyone. And he's a part of a supergroup trio called Gil Filmo. And he is the CEO of Tech Nemo and the creator of the game-changing app called iReal Pro. He's a very busy man. I'm very lucky to get a hold of him. Massimo uh, collected a group of friends t- together and an encounter was born. The sound is awesome and you're going to love it. Let's check in on Massimo and see how he's doing. Hello? Hi, is this Massimo? Yes, this is me. Yeah, hi, this is Tom Gauker. How are you? Hi, Tom. Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? How are you doing with the coronavirus? Uh, well, I'm in Manhattan and uh, I've been locked in the house now since almost for a month and uh, trying to do the best of it that I can. I, I'm lucky that I have a couple of microphones and video cameras, so I'm trying to do some uh, some virtual jam sessions with my friends where we record tracks and pass them to each other and, and try to make some music that way. I really enjoy the production. The sound quality is really awesome. Where was it recorded? Uh, in, uh, in Brooklyn and mastered by David Darlington, mixed and mastered by David Darlington. So, yeah, it was a pretty um, classic uh, type of of production. I explained to him the type of sound that I wanted and then showed him some records, and we went from there. And, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. You met Dana Stevens at Berkeley College, and then you went to the Monk Institute, where you also worked and met with Frank and Linnell to make of the band Gil for Me. In a short statement, can you define Monk's brilliance? Well, his uniqueness is the most striking thing uh, at, at first listen. It really stands out. Even after all these years, it, he's immediately recognizable. He's both his playing and his compositional style and, and that's the one great mark uh, of, of great artists in, in any genre when they immediately recognize their voice their sound and they're able to move you that's all that matters at the end it's not about technique or anything else it's just the uniqueness and, and, and the ability to move them to move you as a listener and he, he's really profoundly great at both all these things. So yeah, that makes makes him one of my favorite jazz musicians. Let's talk about the record in Contra. The first track that I'd like to chat about is the first song on the album. It's called "Hello, I Lied." Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, 
Yeah, sure. It was it was born out of out of a baseline. I was thinking about deception and how you can musically uh, create a rhythmical and melodic deception that sounds like one thing, but as other elements surface in the music, you realize, ah, oh, that's not at all what it sounded like. So the bass line, as I start playing, it might sound like one type of rhythm. And then when the drums and the piano come in, you realize, oh, the beat was somewhere else. And, and, and so it shifts your perspective on the music. And so here, hence the title, Hello, I Lied. It wasn't by, I, I, <laughs> it was a kind of a joke pun on that. Band Plus deconstructed the Tears for Fear song, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, but you took it even further and deconstructed it even more. Uh, what was your reasoning for picking up the song, Everybody Wants to Rule the World? <laughs> it's, uh, just, uh, it's a song that, from my youth, that I used to hear all the time in my teenage years, and it's a really beautiful song, and a great melody in it, that, and um, that's all that it's needed, I think, to to choose as a vehicle for improvisation. Uh, I mean, a lot of the standards that we play and improvise over are, are simple uh, Broadway songs that then get stretched in all kinds of directions by, by instrumentalists. So why not choose a pop song from the 80s? So that's, uh, or I guess, 90, 80s, 90s, yeah. I think so it's the 80s. Um, yeah, late 80s, right. Sounds of Love is a Duke Ellington's uh, composition. And in 1974, Mingus recorded it and called it Duke Ellington's Sounds of Love. And it seems that you're using that version that you're um, working on. You've picked that song. What was the reason for that song? Yeah, this is a composition by uh, by Mingus dedicated to Duke Ellington. Um, and uh, has a beautiful melody. And we were rehearsing it several times. And... And then I was uh, playing such beautiful solos that I, that I said, let's let's play this backwards. Let's start with your, uh, let's have some some soloing going first, and then let's get into the melody to finish. And just yeah, it's a beautiful soaring melody, and it's such a clear homage to Duke Ellington's style of composition. Yeah, Mingus is one of my favorite composers too. Uh, such a unique and immediately recognizable style as well.
Now, Dave Hollins has a great song called Howl's Never. It's on the uh, Pathways album. And at the beginning of the recording, Dave does a, an extended bass solo. And uh, that would have been a great opportunity for you to um, also show your bass chops. Why didn't you go ahead and use your solo? <laughs> yeah, it, well, the, right there. I, I'm never, I've never been a huge fan of bass solos. I love the bass for its value as, as a, a, a compliment and conversation instrument. Uh, and of course, I enjoy soloing, but if I make a record, I often want to feature the other band members, and, and it's so much fun to play with great musicians that listen. I feel like I'm soloing the whole time, because I'm constantly playing, and I'm interacting with the soloist and with the drummer, and often I'm like, do I need, do we need to break down the music, and everybody kind of stops, and I wait for the bass solo to be over so we can get back to the music. <laughs> so it's... Uh, I'm not trying to be humble or anything, but it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, my taste often goes towards fewer bass solos. And I, I love that song, and I had the, the fortune to study with uh, Dave Holland when, uh, when we were all at the Monk Institute, and he um, he shared many of the charts for his tunes, so this was one that, that, uh, remem- that I remember that stayed with me. And uh, I really like the, the, the funky part of Dave Holland's music, so I, I wanted to include uh, a song in that in that style, a little bit more funky, groovy. My favorite song on this album is actually Fellini. Um, I think it's kind of cinematic and in scope, and it's pretty cool. What was the reason for doing this song? This is original composition. I think it's great. So, yeah, yeah. No, this was uh, my o- homage to growing up in Italy, and and these are the sounds. To me, that I remember from watching a Fellini movie, and I can, be, I can see in my mind uh, Marcello Mastroianni, this Italian handsome actor, driving down on a Vespa on the, on the side of the, of the beach and going to pick up Sophia Loren. Uh, <laughs> just these are the images that I had in mind when I composed this song. Massimo, your new album is called Encontra, and Massimo is also the CEO of Tech Nemo and the creator of iReal Pro application. Massimo Bilcutti, thank you for talking to me on Something Came From Baltimore. Thank you, Tom. Hi, it's Tom Gowker, and I am the host of Something Came From Baltimore. Something Came From Baltimore is a words and music podcast, and it has famous and future famous artists. Artists like Sean Jones, Rupert Holmes, Auntie Hammy, Joey DeFrancesco, Go Go Penguin, Joey Alexander, Bucanti, Gerald Albright, Paula Cole, and Kat Edmondson. It's music that matters. It's music for your ears. Listen and subscribe to Something Came From Baltimore and be a part of that Be More music scene. Hello, all you lovely podcast listeners. My name is Danny. And I'm Mo. And we have a topical podcast called, Is That My Friend? Is That My Friend? Um, I literally just said that. Um, I'm literally not sure why you're being rude to me right now on this podcast promo. <laughs> well, what do we talk about on this podcast? Girl, we talk about everything. We talk about shoes, talk about relationships, talk about books, we talk about movies, talk about theater, we talk about... All right, all right, that's all true. We dedicate each episode to a specific topic. And as a twist, someone on the podcast does not know the topic beforehand, so they can have a more organic response to that topic. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Check us out at anchor.fm slash friend. 
Okay, love you. Bye.